subquery factoring, also known as common table expressions, also known as the with clause. This is what it looks like. I have with, I come up with a meaningful name, effectively a name of a table, and I give it a query. That query can then be referred to as if it was that table. The last time someone was hired is for each department is the department number. The last time someone was hired, group by department number, and then I just query it. At which point you go, wow, I took a three line query, made it into a six line query, and it did exactly the same thing. That's just a waste of time, unless you're paid by the line of code. But you know, what's the big deal? Why do I think it's cool? Why is it worth talking about in this session today? I think it's an awesome metaphor for solving problems. And let me try and justify that to you. We're using relational database. That's what SQL's for. And relational, the relational model is a rigorous model. In fact, it's, it's the dominant model in all data access, right? So it's, it's rigorous, and it's dominant, and it can sort of suck, right? Because it's complicated. And that's not our fault. It's, if you're a developer in the room, it's never our fault, right? ever. <laughs> It's these guys' fault. They invented the thing. You know, you go read relational theory, and this is, you know, this is they go, data is represented as mathematical entry relations, and entry relation being the subset of the Cartesian product of n domains. I have no idea what that means. For me, relational database was like Excel, but bigger. You know, that, that's pretty much how I started you know, when I was a coding. It's a complicated thing. And the problem is, we don't think relationally. Human beings don't think like that. We think in procedural terms. If someone gives me a module specification, it'll read something like this. It's a stepwise process. It'll say, look, here's the program I need. First, go get the total salary for each department. Then get the average of those totals, so it's the average total salary per department. And then, with those averages, list the departments that are actually above that average. That's how a specification typically comes to us as coders. Do this, then this, then this. That's not relational. That's the antithesis of relational. That's procedural code. So our challenge is to take procedural and turn it into relational code, and that's hard. The with clause lets us adopt a procedural approach to a relational solution. First, get the total salary. OK, I'll just focus on that part first. I need department salaries, so department name, sum, group by department number. That's done. Now I can just assume that exists. So I can now satisfy the second query. What's the average of those things? Well, I just, I just built one of those things, department salaries. I'll just get the average. That's a query. I can write that in isolation, easy to do, and then list the departments above the average. Well, I've got a thing called department salaries now. I've got a thing called average salaries. Simple join, and I'm done. Wrap it into one clause. I've taken a procedural approach and got a nice SQL relational solution. That's why I love the with clause. It, it matches my mindset. This is how I solve problems. So it's a really cool way. That's the database's problem now to work out how to best run that. And that's what we always want from our SQL. It's a programmer's approach, relational solution. What's not to love? The execution plan when you run a with clause, you'll get two possibilities. The first one, you'll often see temporary storage. You'll see this in the execution plan. Conceptually, this is create a table, load it up, create another table, load it up, query it, conceptually. And the database might actually do that for you. You'll see it in your execution plan. Temp table transformation. I'm actually loading it into a temporary table and then querying that temporary table later on. But it's doing it for us. We don't have to worry about doing all that work ourselves. And in fact, if you put a trace on these things sometimes, you can actually see that's exactly what the database is doing. Behind the scenes, creating a temporary table just for this session and then effectively um, getting rid of it. The nice thing with this is in Oracle 18, uh, this is exposed to us. We can actually have private session temporary tables. That's coming in 18 next year. The other thing which I think is even cooler is the database may opt to use no temporary storage. It's sort of doing the heavy lifting of turning a procedural piece of SQL into a relational thing. There's an execution plan for the same query that I did before, the average salaries, but there's no temporary table loading in there. It actually has taken those different parts of the SQL, folded it into one big, call it a mega join, and optimize it accordingly. That's pretty cool, because it's effectively done the, the thing that we used to have to do, which is converting procedural approach into relational approach.